Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this HP 5061 cesium beam frequency standard. This is uh, the second of two. The first one I already did a video on. And that's why we're having part two to compare the performance of these. They appear to be the same. They came from the same auction. Probably uh, have a shared history, I'm guessing. Uh, a couple of differences. This has rack mount components. And also it came with the power cord that uh, I was missing for the first one. So I rigged up something if you want to go look at that. I'm going to turn these on, warm them up, and then we'll get the corresponding outputs on the two to see uh, if we can get them to be uh, running at precisely the same frequency. We look at the power of these two. The one is about uh, 57 watts and the other one is 44. That's within range of what these are supposed to uh, do. I haven't looked inside this one yet. We'll do that quickly later on in the video. Uh, one kind of superficial difference is this has a kind of operating instruction tag on it. The control panel of the two units is the same. Uh, basically, there's some really simple controls and a meter that you can select what you're reading with this multi-selector switch. This is adjustment for the uh, crystal oscillator frequency. And uh, here we've got this uh, one pulse per second uh, real-time clock. Those aren't running at the moment, but they always seem to come on at the same value. I've got both of these units turned on. Uh, top one is the one that's making this kind of rattling noise. Got them both hooked up to the oscilloscope. Neither is producing a signal. These things need to be started. They're designed to run continuously after you start them. So here we see the seconds ticking away and we see the yellow waveform has turned into a sine wave. Down here it says 100 kilohertz approximately. So we'll start the second one, which is the blue line. You'll notice those are drifting very slowly. It's kind of hard to see. I've tuned them in where they are uh, close to the same frequency. Both units are running on the internal crystal oscillator. Um, and I have reason to believe that the cesium tubes in both are bad. I'm gonna turn this to cesium off, which doesn't really change anything. We'll turn that back on. It shows the alarm light, which really means that the cesium isn't working. The alarm light doesn't uh, signal when it's off, so that makes sense. Same here. This one, this alarm light doesn't signal either way. This is a an adjustment for the uh, crystal oscillator. I'm going to move that a little bit. It's kind of a ten turn pot type affair, and you might see those drifting a little faster if you can imagine that across each other i'm going to turn it back the other way and we'll see that the drifting kind of stops at some point or even if i go too far drifts the other way bottom line on these is uh the cesium tube doesn't seem to be working on either one uh, that's not unexpected on this one the the clock display isn't incrementing and I found uh, through other measurements that the PPS doesn't come out on this one but it does on this one which is the first one I tested in part one of the video so it kind of makes sense that something isn't working right about the, the one pulse per second which evidently drives this uh, one second display that would make sense and also the locality of the two so Anyway, what we've got here are two units that the crystal oscillators appear to work fine. Uh, some of the basic adjustments work, basic functions, but, uh, you know, not the atomic clock that we're hoping for, probably because the cesium tube is bad. The reason I say the cesium tube is bad is that when you have this set to ion pump, uh, it's supposed to be a lower value. Both of these are reading in the uh whatever plus 10 range 
which I believe from the manual is uh, is uh, the wrong value. Just like with the first one, the second one appears to be uh, what I called in the first video as is plus, which is a lot of things about it work nominally, but uh, it certainly doesn't seem to be in a comic clock. Here's the innards of the newer one, or newer to me at least. I'm not going to poke inside there because there's a warning on the back that says 4,000 volts. But uh, here you can see some of the markings on the cesium tube. We'll kind of go this way and get a good shot of it. Uh, this thing sticking up is uh, part of a microwave waveguide, as I understand it. And basically on this side, we've got the, the crystal uh, oven assembly amplifier, power supply, controller, and this mechanism allows you to totally synchronize uh, two of these units based on the uh, time delay, and there's a sync button. Uh, I haven't gone that far. That doesn't really make sense if they're not uh, working with atomic accuracy, or even one of them is. So, uh, we're not going to go that far, but it shows you that uh, this is a timer with lots of different uh, factor 10 time delay units on it. And there's some cabling on the back that I haven't hooked up, but you can uh, go through a procedure and get two units synced together so that they'll say the same numbers at the same time. So that wraps it up for part two of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.